Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video I'm going to go over the network rules in Pernet. Now, the network rules are some of the most uniquely useful features of Pernet. These really essentially allow you to fully customize the entire networking experience for your own workflow as the developer. It changes how the data moves and exactly who is allowed to do what, in terms of what can clients do, what can only the server do, and what can only the owner do. Now, by default, when you add your network manager script to the scene, you'll be prompted with giving it a set of network rules. This is really what is used by default. Now, the ones that are found on the network manager are the default default one so in case objects haven't been changed and we'll get into that in a bit this will be the go to rule set so this is really the most important rule set of your entire setup now if you just go ahead and hit it here the little button on the right where we can select what rules is available in our project you'll see that you're immediately met with the three default ones of pernet the server owner server strict and unsafe now if you're familiar with other systems like Mira and fishnet the server strict option will be the one that you're mostly familiar with this is the one that really only allows things to act through the server such as synchronizing spawning and despawning sending rpcs and so on. this will be the normal workflow of a server client relationship however we allow for something else the server owner one is very similar to the server strict except it allows the owner to do a little bit more such as for example despawn its own objects and the unsafe option essentially allows everybody to do everything now in my opinion this is the one that'll work for nine out of ten of you if not even more this is the one for example if you're new to networking or for that sake if you're just new to pernet i'll really recommend this one it's the one that'll give you the full feature set of pernet and really allow you to give the easiest possible workflow the reason why it's called unsafe is because it's not cheat proof but i promise you for the love of god you don't need cheat proofing right now what you need to do is create a game you need a game first and then afterwards you can care about cheat proofing it if that's what you really want of course if you're a skilled developer if you're already very familiar with multiplayer you can go for the server strict one which would be the most common one that you'd be familiar working with already the unsafe one in my opinion is also the one that's best for any non-competitive games again if they're not competitive you don't really care about cheat proving if you're making a co-op game or whatnot and i would just go for the unsafe setup now another thing you can very easily do in pernet is make your own network rules so let me just go into my settings folder here and go and create pernet and network rules and i'm just going to call these my rules now in my new rule set here you can see that i can fully customize all the rules and you'll be met with some drop downs here to begin with of course keep in mind that these settings are prone to change as pernet develops but it'll likely not get fewer it might get more so if you just open the first one you'll quickly get an idea of how these rules work if we go into the default spawn rules you'll see the spawn authorization the despawn authorization and the default owner so for example the spawn authorization can be set to server or everyone it really just changes who's allowed to spawn objects the server option is obviously the one you're familiar with from other systems if you are familiar with those and everyone essentially allows every single client to spawn networked objects the despawn auth once again sets who's allowed to spawn or despawn objects or sorry who's allowed to just despawn objects so if you set it to everything everybody can despawn every object if we now remove the op server from here it means that the server and the owner which is essentially the server owner rule set does. It allows the server or the owner to despawn their own objects. And again, if we set it to observer, that means that everybody can. And I could really keep going through the rules like this. They should have, if you do hover over there, a lot of them, if there's you know questions or things you doubt, you can just hover over them and you can see the tooltip. And it should hopefully explain to you, for example, in this case, who can assign ownership to objects. We can also have everyone be in control of ownerships and transfer the authorization or ownership, remove the ownership can also be everyone and so on and so forth. And this really goes for a bunch of rules. Now, if you want these rule set to be in effect by default, we'd of course have to go into my network manager again and then select my rules if those are the ones that I want to use. In my case though, I'm going to stick with the unsafe rules. Now, let's say that I want some custom rules to apply. So let's say, for example, I want this to always be very strict, right? That's completely fine. But let's say that we want this to be a bit different for certain objects. So for example, if I go onto my player prefab here, let's say that I want to be able to spawn this or act with it differently on the network. Let's say that I don't care if this guy is secure. The player doesn't have to be secure. What you can do is on any network identity script, which is essentially any script that acts with the network, whether that's your own or one of our components, it'll have this override defaults. This override defaults essentially are able to override the settings from the network manager. This will right now be the network rules and the visibility rules set as well. But the visibility rules aren't that relevant for right now. So let's just focus on the permission override here. So in this case, we can, for example, set this one to be fully unsafe. And this now means that how this, this network transform component now acts on the network is fully unsafe. 
We can do the same, for example, for the ownership toggle, if we wanted to do that. In our case, it doesn't really matter. Our own components here don't do much, but I hope it makes sense that if you'd make a custom script, it now actually changes how your custom script and only that can act over the network, and it'll essentially ignore the default rules. So again, the ones on your network manager are really only acting as the default rule set. So you can override these on a per component basis. If you're familiar with the likes of Mirror and Fishnet, you'll also realize that we don't have network objects as per se. The only thing that we have is a little bit similar as the prefab link and it really holds no functionality at all. It's only just to recognize it as a spawnable prefab, that's it. And essentially because we don't have network objects in the same way that are global to the entire uh, object or prefab that is spawned, it also means that you can actually have things act completely individually. So for example, if I go on the player here, let's say I add a cube and I call this just player cube, for example, and I now to this cube, let me remove the collider and let me just add a network transform like so. It actually means that if I go and I play now, you can see the player will spawn with the cube on him, but I can actually take the cube and just remove it from him and that'll now work fine. And now when another player is to join, if I have him join, you can see he can now actually see the cube as a completely unattached thing as well. And you can see he can see it individually too. So this is really also our way of disconnecting logic from entire game objects and instead putting it onto the, oh sorry, from the entire prefab and instead putting it onto the individual components, which is why we have this idea of network identities. And it is these individual identities whose rule set that you can override. I hope that makes sense and I hope that's to some extent clear. To a lot of you, it won't really matter a lot. I think it's just important that you understand the principle of it if you are going to be working with it. But again, as I've mentioned before, for probably 98% of you guys, just stick to the unsafe rule set and you'll be good to go and you'll have the full functionality and power of Pernet behind you. I really hope you liked the video. Remember, if you have questions, feel free to join the Discord. The link will be in the description and then the pinned comment. Also feel free to throw any questions into the comment section. I'll gladly help out there as well. Remember to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And other than that, I just hope that you have a wonderful day.